A Justice Yuju Lalit led bench today quashed the FIR which was lodged against senior journalist Vinod Dua last year after he had conducted a YouTube show and made certain comments about the first wave of COVID-19 lockdown. The court has noted that statements expressing disapproval of the functions of the government or the work done by them in no way can attract the charge of sedition. The court has also held that Vinod Dua cannot be held liable uh, to be spreading false information or rumours. However, an additional prayer was made by Vinod Dua seeking to form a committee so that journalists with more than 10 years of experience in the field does not face such FIRs. However, the request for such a committee has not been uh, approved by the Supreme Court since it's purely in the legislative domain. The court has ruled that the statements made by Dua were nothing but an appraisal of the situation which was prevailing at that point of time and that indeed migrants were on the road uh, travelling from their places of work to the native places when Dua made those statements and it was not Dua who incited the crowds to leave their workplace. A Justice A.M. Khanwilkar led bench of the Supreme Court today delivered judgment on a plea challenging the constitutional validity of a bylaw of the CBSC board which did not allow for the change in name of the student's name or uh, their parents in the school certificate if the initial name entered in the school record was different. The court has today ruled that the right to control one's identity has to remain with the same individual. The court stated that CBSC, which deals with the maintenance of educational standards, cannot arrogate to itself the power to impact identity of students who enroll with it. The court has also held that CBSC cannot use administrative efficiency as a reason to not allow students to change their name in the official records, especially when there is a valid reason for it and that it, this kind of a restriction was unreasonable in nature. Attorney General for India K.K. Venugopal today informed a Justice A.M. Khanwilkar led bench of the Supreme Court that the central government has taken a decision to cancel the CBSC exams. ICSC also informed the court that following the central government's decision, ICSC too has cancelled the examination. However, Attorney General for India sought a two weeks time to place on record the objective criteria to be determining the marks of these particular candidates. Now, ICSC too has been given two weeks time to file an affidavit in the court. When advocate Mamta Sharma impressed upon a new petition that has been filed in the Supreme Court by Anuha Srivastava Sahai, in which it has been uh, pleaded that all state governments in the country should be directed to cancel the offline state or NIOS examination in line with the CBSC directive, the court said and asked the petitioners to be patient and that first uh, the court will peruse over the reply given by the CBSC as to the what is the objective criterion and it is after that that it will venture into the question of cancelling the state board examinations. A three-judge bench of the Supreme Court comprising of Justices L. Nageshwara Rao, Ravindra Bhatt and Hemant Gupta today reserved its judgment on the plea by Madras Bar Association challenging the constitutional validity of the Tribunal Reforms Ordinance and certain amended portions uh, as by the Finance Act 2017. Well, today was the day two of the hearing and after Justice Hemant Gupta sought to know from the Attorney General for India K.K. Venugopal that why did the retrospective effect of Section 184 Clause 11 of the Finance Act 2017 overrule the Supreme Court's judgments, which was delivered in the period of 2017 to 2020? The Attorney General replied that it was he was very sorry to say, but that uh, there may be innumerable orders passed by their lordships. However, the Parliament can enact a law if it sees uh, that there is public interest in it. However, uh, Justice Rao sought to uh, impress upon the Attorney General that uh, the judiciary indeed has the power to strike down a statute or a law if it violates the basic structure of the Constitution. Justice L. Nageshwar Rao also wondered that what will be the order of the day if the Union of India, which is only a litigant in a case, has an order which is against it and seeks to overturn it by a legislation. Senior advocate Arvind Dattar submitted that these provisions have to be struck down as unconstitutional and that since 1986 he was associated with the Madras Bar Association seeking to safeguard the independence of the tribunals and that it has been 36 years he's still fighting for the cause and there was nothing to be confrontational about it since all of them want tribunals to be functioning.
The court reserved its judgment today. Uh, however, it has not heard any of the intervention applications and the court made it clear that it will be delivering the judgment only on the aspect of the constitutionality of the provisions of the Ordinance and Finance Act 2017. Well, that's all from Supreme Court today. Do stay tuned with Supreme Court today tomorrow as well. And don't forget to like and share baranbench.com.